All right, hello everyone. This is the face that you haven't seen in a long time. This is also the face of what COVID-19 looks like, especially in the situation that you don't have a hairdresser. Uh, but the point of this video is for me to show you guys what CVs make it to Google interviews. And I'm going to show you not only my CV in this video, but three different CVs that I got from like a friend of mine and a public CV that I found um, so that you have an idea what Google is looking for in candidates and what actually makes it through. Just one thing before I start, I know that I haven't been making a whole lot of videos. To be exact, I've made like zero over the last months, except for some videos related to Cisco International Internship Program. But I'm really, really, really excited for the future of this channel and I have a lot of cool ideas. You will see some of them coming up soon, so hopefully you enjoy them as much as I enjoy making them. Another thing that I want you to know and um, take advantage of is I'm gonna be adding under each of my videos in the description, a link, which is like a submission form. And in that submission form, I'm going to basically allow you to send in questions and submit um, topics for videos. And yeah, let's start with the CVs. So the way I'm going to go about this is I'm going to show every single CV for a bit of time on the screen. Um, and I'm actually not going to open it entirely. I'm just going to click on it so you can see it fully. But I encourage you to pause the video and have a look for yourself at each of the CVs so that you can see really what Google is looking for. And for those of you who are interested to stick out, I'm gonna provide further um, thoughts on what really makes a CV get to Google interviews. And this will be kind of drawing on from some of the things that I find similar across those CVs. And I think you should stick for it as well because I think it would be useful. Looking at my CV for now, I'm gonna switch to the other one in a little bit. But one thing that I noticed is that to get to Google interviews, you kind of need to show that you're an outstanding sort of individual, like whether that is through showing you have multiple work experiences and a good name, you did something quite cool during your work experience, or you just did a lot of cool projects or you have really good achievements that show that you're not like average, but you're kind of like up there and you're one of the top performers. This is really important. Um, Moving on to the second one, you can pause your screen if you want. Um, this is the CV that made it to software engineer. And by the way, just to clarify the roles, I made it to interview for associate product manager, which is one of the um, quite competitive position in Google and they're offering very few places each year. Um, this is software engineer CV. And the last one is um, a business position. I'm not sure exactly what, like the most popular is business analyst but I'm not sure if that was the CV that made it to business analyst or some other position. Now, having said that, I want to just outline some things more specifically in the CVs. One key thing is never make your CV longer than one page. Anyone you ask will tell you that. Um, and I've said it in my previous video. I want to touch on something that I kind of learned recently. Um, just before I do that, I want to mention more on the technical skills section. I already said it in my Amazon CV video, but if you haven't watched that, I think it's really important to have a separate section that makes um, distinction of technical skills. And I think to like some extent, this section helped me get to Amazon interview because it just makes it really clear what skills you have and um, putting it as a separate section makes it more impactful and showing that you like have those technical skills and I'm going to explain more what I mean in a little bit. The thing I realized though in the last couple of months, um, and this is exciting, so we can do a drum roll. Uh, leadership positions are so important, regardless of the position. Um, I thought it's something that you kind of need to put only when you're going for like managerial stuff or it's just something to put there because it sounds cool but there's super super practical reasons why you need those positions on your cv um the reason for that is first at this point they want to know you're like a self-starter you can like take on work and like take ownership of things and that's like a very good indication if you've had done it in the past by leading projects 
The second thing is that eventually in your career, you'll have to lead people. I mean, no one can force you, but you'll get more money and like, it's kind of cool to have a team and run something larger scale. So like, at some point they want to know that you'll be able to excel into those positions and grow. Um, so that's the other thing. And it's just so important to have it there. Like I recommend everyone to put a section that is leadership experience, or if not, demonstrate in your um, sort of experiences that you've took initiative. Don't just say that you've been involved in projects or don't just say like, oh, I call it these languages, but I took ownership of this, or I took initiative of this, or I was responsible for this and I did these things, or that was the impact that I personally had on the company or the project. And this really goes a long way. Um, other things like, I think that's it for my CV. Like I definitely think my awards section sucks quite a bit and I've improved it in my current version of the CV. Um, but I want to say that here, um, when we look at the software engineering CV, we can kind of draw on some things that um, are different. So like, I think um, and you can see that the format is very similar, by the way. Um, it's because he's a friend of mine who liked my template and I sent it to him so he has been using it. And by the way, I'll put it under the video so any one of you who is interested can also use that template. Um, but in his CV, you can see that he decided not to use technical skills section. He just has it here, which is okay. Um, and especially in his case, I think, um, it's still a consistent CV and like you can see all these languages that and, and tools that he worked on. But I still think that having a separate section with technical skills make it more impactful, makes it more clear and uh, it's easier for the recruiter to just skim and like have a look at it. Um, the next thing that I think he has pretty, pretty good is the awards and achievements section. And he's one of the two people that I kind of looked at their CV and just by looking at the awards and achievements section, I was like, wow, this guy is really, really good. And it's not like you don't need to look at the rest of the CV, but it already shows you like, okay, this person is kind of outstanding. And um, it almost convinces you to like get them to an interview. I think that they do look for like a significant level of experience. Um, other people that I know who did get to Google interviews had like two previous experiences or three previous experiences or like some of them even had like somehow four different experiences. So the more, the better, the more you can show that you're outstanding also, the better. Now looking at the last CV, we can see that it's kind of different in the way that education is on the bottom. For example, I personally recommend you always keep your education at the top. Maybe at some point in your career, you could like put it lower, but I personally don't see a reason why. Um, especially when you're currently a student, you want to kind of like put it up there and make it clear. Um, she's been able to show that she like started something. She raised like hundred thousand dollars, like affected a lot of people. So that's like really showing me that, um, she's a person that like first can take responsibility is like high achiever is like outstanding in some way. And I would at least feel like I should give her the chance to get to an interview. Anyway, I think that's pretty much it. What I wanted to do with this video, just kind of draw on some of my insights into the CVs, um, how I think Google looks at them. And the main point is anyway, for you to have a look at them and make some correlations for yourself. Again, use the submission form to submit ideas that you want me to work on, have, um, download the template if you would like to use it. And that's basically it. Um, Watch out for the rest of the videos that I'm going to be releasing soon because they have some really, really cool ideas, as I mentioned. And that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.